Hi, Brian Coulter here, Evolutionary Astrologer, for your horoscope report for the upcoming Scorpio full moon that happens on May 7th. And this is a pretty charged one, as, as they have been the last three orbits or so, as the moon has been very close to the Earth. The full moons have been quite dramatic. Uh, they've been called super moons, which means they're at the closest they can be, which they look a little bigger in the sky. So they look dramatic. They also cause some drama around us in our own personal lives and globally. Charged, intense especially when the full moon is in the sign of Scorpio. Scorpio is on the emotional plane, our subjective plane. So emotions a little bit more intense as they have been. However, this month, uh, you know, I will be describing the Scorpio full moon, of course. That's the title of the video here. But I also really want to look at the energy of the first uh, half of this month of May. Because it, there's a dramatic shift that occurs right around May 10th, okay? So the full moon's before that, obviously, on the 7th, and then we have this radical shift on the 10th. Really, the week of the 10th to the 16th, we have four pretty big events going on, all smashed in that one week. We have three planets going retrograde. I have a lot to say about that. We also have Mercury going into its own sign of Gemini. Whenever a planet's in its own sign, it's got some extra oomph to it, okay? So I really see that week as kind of the marker, the pivot point energetically for the month. Now, we also have another major event besides the three planets going retrograde, and that is the nodes of the moon have just changed signs. They've been in Capricorn and Cancer the last 18 months. I talked a lot about that in the recent series of videos I did with Lada on her channel. And uh, now they're entering uh, Sagittarius and Gemini. Now that's a big subject and I'm actually going to make a, 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 an, an individual video for those signs where I'll be able to discuss uh, the, the, the houses, you know, and discuss where the nodes land in your own personal chart so we can dive a little deeper. But I'll just kind of gloss over it today because it's really tied into this whole theme here for the month and really beyond. Because remember, this is starting in 18th an 18 month uh, cycle. Now about these retrograde planets, we have Saturn going retrograde May 10th, Venus going retrograde May 12th, the same day that Mercury enters its own sign. So that's a really charged day. And then we have Jupiter uh, going retrograde on May 15th, joining Pluto, which has already been going retrograde. You know, Jupiter and Pluto are next to each other in the sky right now. So a lot of retrograde energy right now. And implicit in that, the fact that the retrograde energy is, is just about to happen in a big way, the, all the planets, or at least those three planets, are slowing down in the sky, at least from our perspective here on planet Earth. It almost looks like they're completely standstill in the sky. That's called when a planet stations. So we have three planets effectively stationed right now. And whenever a planet's stationed, it's really strong. I said that in many of my videos because it happens pretty often. Okay, So we're just getting maximum pulses of these planetary energies that's just flooding the Earth right now and running through us. Okay, So really charged time. And of course, this is aided and abetted by the, the Scorpio supermoon. Okay, So intensity. Now, I don't want to be overly dramatic with the word intensity here. Uh, so... Uh, and the reason for that is because um, the energy has started to ease up a little bit. You know, now we're in the season of Taurus, Taurus the bull. Taurus is ruled by Venus, the goddess of peace and serenity. So things are starting to relax. It's still really charged right now, but things are starting to relax. Also, there was a really, let's say, at least astrologically speaking, a heated energy between Saturn and Mars. I've talked about it in my previous videos. Saturn and Mars were together in the sky in a conjunction. They've now parted. They're in the same sign still, but you know they're like a good 20 degrees apart. So the energy there has subsided. And now we're about to step into this retrograde energy. And the last two-thirds of the month feels completely different than the first third of the month as this Mars-Saturn continues to taper off. All right, with Saturn 
Of course, Saturn's been kind of a headliner for the last year and a half or two years because it's been headed through its own sign of Capricorn. Of course, it rules two signs. It rules Capricorn and it rules Aquarius. It's an Aquarius right now. It's been through Capricorn, entered its Aquarius. So, you know, whether it's in either of these signs, it's still really strong. But about a month and a half ago, it finally left Capricorn, entered Mercury. Now we're today, it's stationed. It's slowed down. It's about at two degrees Aquarius right now. And then boom, it's going to go retrograde and then go back. And then in a couple months, enter back into Capricorn. So, you know, I've talked a lot about Saturn, okay, this, this, this time, the 2020, all these major events, the year of the Great Awakening, the, redom, the year where I believe we get more freedom, okay, that's Aquarius, freedom, individuality, technology, yeah. So as Saturn has dipped its toes into Aquarius, it's still there at its maximum pulse now through the station. And then it will recede over the next couple months in Aquarius where it'll return to uh, Capricorn. So we got a little sneak preview of what 2021, 2022, and even, even part of 2023 will look like as Saturn makes its great return into that sign of Aquarius. So we're getting the sneak preview now. As all this energy is hitting this, you know, major apex, all these planets retrograde, the nodes changing signs, this is a major, major shift. And with Jupiter going retrograde, they're next to Pluto. Pluto, the planet of extremes. Okay. Jupiter, the planet of expansion. Coming together. This is a power-packed combination. The god of hell, you know, that's what Pluto is called. And also the king of the gods, Jupiter. There's some big energy here. There's some dramatic energy. There's that word again, dramatic. So here they are, holding hands in the sky, both retrograde. Restructuring around, remember that key word, retrograde word, restructuring around Jupiter-Pluto themes. Okay. Now, on some level, Pluto represents the powerful, powerful people. And Jupiter, the planet of luck and expansion and good fortune. The medieval astrologers, you know, if they saw a strong Jupiter in somebody's chart, they'd say glory, glory, power, honor, and riches will be yours. So some astrologers call Jupiter-Pluto uh, contacts in a birth chart the, the millionaire's placement or aspect. But, okay, you know, when these two planets come together, we'll see that often. It's not always true in the birth charts, but there, there are many very rich, successful people that have that aspect in their birth chart. And Jupiter people with strong Jupiters in their chart do tend to rise to the top. They do tend to become successful. Now, is it smart success or stupid success? It's kind of depending on the decisions they make in life. If they're really working with their birth chart in a very evolved way, you know, really embodying and expressing through action the more virtuous behavior potential of their template, which is their birth chart, then, you know, so-called smart success, okay? Stupid success is when they're really, you know, manifesting the lower octave, lower consciousness potentials of their birth chart. I mean, all of our, every one of our birth charts has a high-end expression and a low-end expression. It's just a template, a blueprint, a hologram through which our soul shines through. And free will trumps all here. So what we do with the energy is completely up to us. But it is true. This is a, uh, these two planets coming together is quite powerful. So on one level, a retrograde restructuring on power, on wealth. Yeah, that's another Jupiter subject. Okay. Wealth and power. Restructuring around that. And how might that happen? Well, there's a lot of instability in the stock market. That might be part of it, of course. But of course, we always have to look at the rest of the symbols here to get some more insight. There is a big overarching theme here of, well, on one level, communication. On another level, uh, information. Okay, and the reason for that is, as I said, Mercury entering its own sign of Gemini. Mercury is the planet of communication and information, our perception. There's going to be more to say about perception in a minute here. Our thoughts. 
And uh, there appears to be about to be an influx of information, but not only because Mercury is zipping through its own sign, it's going through it pretty fast, but also Venus, which is going retrograde, also in Gemini, okay? The sign of the communicator, of the teacher, of the storyteller. And Venus is in a square to Neptune in Pisces that kind of muddies the waters a little bit, uh, a little bit of perhaps disillusionment around information. Uh, we'll get back to that. Venus is about uh, our relationships, communicating with people. It's a very uh, social, connective, kind of flirty, playful energy, uh, Venus and Gemini. And when interacting with Neptune, dreamy Neptune can be kind of fun, actually. Now, before we get to really the biggest theme I see here, let's talk a little bit about Venus going into retrograde. Restructuring around relationships. That's a big one. Venus, the goddess of love. And of course, uh, through the last few months, been pretty intense. I said it in the last video, there's a lot of memes out there that, oh, the divorce rate's about to explode once we're let out of our caves, you know. And uh, that's not always the case, obviously, but, you know, I'm Really, when we're brought to our knees in our life, there's a lot of stress in the life. All the pre-existing conditions, you know, uh, cracks in the foundation of the relationship really start to open up and become more obvious. So, okay, fine, that may be true, statistically speaking. But there's also going to be a lot of bonds that get much stronger. You know, that's just the nature of Saturn. It usually just, we either grow apart or grow stronger together. You know, because it's the planet of maturation. And Saturn's been the, the major feature over the last year and a half, really, as I've been saying. So here we find Venus restructuring around relationships, strengthening the bonds, maybe parting ways if for some of us. And this could be for friendships, best friendships, even family members, uh, people who are no longer serving our direction in a lifetime and vice versa. Okay. And that's true. But Looking at Venus from another angle, and really this is where I want to put most of my attention, is Venus very strong, stationing retrograde simultaneously in what's called a square aspect to Neptune. So Venus, the goddess of love and playfulness and things we value, in an aspect to Neptune. The, the dreamy, mystical, spiritual planet. It, so we have Venus representing, uh, yeah, things we value, uh, things we want to savor in life. There's a playful, connective quality to it. And uh, wanting to have a good time, wanting to have fun, wanting to relax. Those are all very Venusian motivations. In contact with Neptune, the planet of boundlessness, okay? And uh, on the negative side of Neptune, we can want to uh, check out of reality. So I kind of like the energy of Venus and Neptune interacting here. I feel like we need this breath of fresh air. You know, I feel like we need a little playfulness. We need a little fun. Of course, that can get out of hand. It can lead to uh, a little bit too much fun. It can lead to hedonism and debauchery if we let it, you know. So there's energy here of emerging into the light you know, the symbolism of, I used that word cave before, okay? Coming out of the cave and the light is blinding, but we're feeling the fresh air again, okay? A whole new world, okay? So, you know, I think it's kind of implicit in what I've been saying, but, you know, a lot of the cultures around the world and, and different societies and stuff, I think they're going to start to reintegrate into some semblance of normalcy, you know, as we start to return to life. Of course, not all areas will be like that. They may be a little tighter on the lockdown and such, but I think things are about to ease this month. This is a major transitional point right around when these planets all start to retrograde. So with Venus and Neptune, it feels like entering into some sort of fantasy, having some fun, being playful, the dreaminess. It's like being able to experience things that you haven't been able to for months. That's kind of the spirit and the energy of this. Now, it is a square aspect. We've got to keep that in mind. That's a friction-based angle. So we want to take a hard look at the shadow side dynamics of these uh, planetary alignments here. At least through the planet energy, it could be 
overindulgence. Of course, we can take things too far. So it's important to, you know, couple some of that playfulness, which I encourage. I, I'm feeling that energy too. It's like, ah, there's some things I'd really like to do that have been, you know, denied for me for obvious reasons. Okay. So that's one level. So, and in terms of grounded reason, you know, Neptune and Venus don't have much of those ingredients. So therefore we got to supply them so we don't go out of uh, balance, but having a good time, I'm on board with that. Absolutely. Now, Venus in the sign of Gemini, Mercury entering Gemini, big communication themes. Okay. That's really the biggest theme here is communication. And when it's in a square to Neptune, Neptune can have this sort of energy of kind of walking through mist. Okay. We can get confused during Neptune times. So confusion around communication, that's another uh, shadow side of this dynamic is potential uh, miscommunications, especially with the Venus uh, being in retrograde. And I just see a lot of movement in general. I mean, Mercury moving so fast right now. And Mercury whips around the sun very, very quickly, about once every 88 days. And it's in its own sign moving quickly through that sign. So busyness, mobility, you know, travel probably on some level, business, commerce, people connecting, people conversing, even if it is through a mask, you know, people getting more engaged in life. That's what it feels like after May 10th. Of course, we're generalizing here. Not every place on the globe will be like that. But by and large, the majority, the energy is now shifting in this way. Now, everything I said we can really find in the, the, the conventional paradigms of astrology, where we kind of look at, uh, you know, global trends here as we're doing this uh, horoscope report. But stepping the energy down, you know, leveraging the insights of evolutionary astrology, we can say, okay, well, how can I use Neptune and Venus for my own betterment, for my own evolution? Because it's running through all of us, but, you know, how can I use it in my own life? It's like, what, what can I do practically with my own conscious awareness on it to more rapidly evolve? Well, the phrase that comes to mind for me, for starters, is meditation on pleasure. Okay, Really stepping in, because, you know, Neptune is a very transcendent spiritual mystical planet. And a common belief system in spirituality or teachings that you'll find from many different cultures is the wisdom, beautiful wisdom, of remaining in the present moment. A lot of these teachers out there will teach that. It's like the secret to enlightenment, at least a big piece of it, is always being in the present moment, okay? Not being reactionary, but just fo focused, intentional action. It, always in the present moment. So meditation on pleasure, to me, in my mind, feels like savoring. That's the word that comes to mind. You know, I, I, my wife and I went to a park that we haven't been to in a couple months, just a few days ago. And there's a motorcycle. Uh, <laughs> I'm in Portugal. The Portuguese love motorcycles. I don't know if you can hear that, but you'll probably hear it again. Uh, anyways, we went to a park for the first time in a couple months. And I noticed, and I wasn't even thinking astrologically then, but just through the experience, I was very much in the present moment. You know, I try to do my best in that regard anyways, but I, I noticed I was way more present. I was listening to all the birds more intently than I ever did. You know, I was looking at all these beautiful spring flowers that come up here in Portugal, and I was noticing the difference between them and what they look like back home in California. You know, so I was just like, oh, because I hadn't been there in so long. It's like, oh, I missed you. You know, I missed you. So meditation on pleasure, sprinkle in some grounded reason so we don't take it too far like, you know, some people might. So we can leverage this energy to be more Neptunian with some Venusian spice, which is to live utterly in the present moment. You know, maybe the restaurants start opening a little bit again, and you can uh, visit one of your favorite restaurants in town, and you, you take that first bite of that favorite meal that you used to get once a week before the lockdown, and it's just like, it hits the taste buds, it's like, ah, you know, savor, meditate, you know, that's really the evolutionary intention, at least with these 
two planets here. Okay, so circling back to that theme I kind of let slip a little bit ago, and that is communication. Okay. That's the major theme here. And I, I think I already mentioned it, but let's rattle through it again. The reason for that is Mercury is entering its own sign, and Venus is in Gemini, of course, and then the nodes are shifting, or just have shifted, uh, into Sagittarius and Gemini. So there's Gemini yet again. And uh, Mercury will be conjuncting Venus and squaring Neptune. So there's just so much Mercury-Gemini uh, energy right now. And we tie that into, of course, the full moon, which I haven't said much about yet. Okay, You know, really... Uh, even though this is based around the Scorpio moon, I mean, that's the name of the, the video. Uh, and that's a big event. It is a super moon. But it's kind of uh, eclipsed, I guess you could say, by the energy of the re retrogradations. I mean, really, that second week of the month is, is, is dramatic, as I've been saying. So, But we can also look at Scorpio. Scorpio likes to dig, you know, dig into the unconscious. You know, Scorpio people with strong energy in their chart, like a Scorpio moon or sun or even rising sign, maybe even a strong Pluto in their chart because Pluto rules Scorpio. It can manifest in a variety of ways, but they always like to look, you know, and penetrate underneath the surface of things. Okay. They're very, uh, let's say, sensitive to the uh, psychological motivations uh, that underlie and, and drive forth human behavior. Okay, they're very sensitive to that. They, they have a, a, a zone of truth around them. So, truth serum. That's the name of this video. Yeah. And the reason I picked that is because truthful information, I think, is going to be a major theme here. It might be very well connected to uh, relationships, might get some new relationships coming into our life, maybe learn some information about some existing ones. You know, that could, it can be muddled up in the whole, the, the Venus stuff I was just talking about. I think uh, what we're going to experience collectively on a big level is, of course, got to look at this Jupiter-Pluto as well. You know, information, truthful information that we learn about the rich and powerful, okay? And, uh, you know, uh, uh, Pluto deals with, on some level, so does Scorpio, sexuality, okay? So we may get some truthful information around the rich and powerful and uh, sexuality. It makes me think of uh, Jeffrey Epstein. You know, we may uh, get some information. I know this gets into predictive astrology a little bit, which isn't my area of expertise, but I do like to dabble in it from time to time. We may get some insights. Uh, oh, there's another motorcycle. <laughs> get some insights, something like that. Maybe the, something from that case gets, uh, you know, released to the public to, to deepen our understanding around it. Or maybe it's something different. You know, who knows how it will manifest. The, the universe always finds a way. But I do think we're going to get a big truth serum. Okay. It might not happen on the full moon, but it really feels like this month, especially as Mercury goes through Gemini, as it's also uh, strengthened by the intensity of the supermoon, as well as these stationing planets. And information, this is where we're going to head into one of the big themes for the next 18 months, as these nodes, nodes of the moon, which represent the collective karma, at least through the evolutionary astrology perspective, Okay, the, car, the collective karma of planet Earth here. And it's leaving uh, Capricorn and Cancer, where it's been for some time now, and it's entering Sagittarius and Gemini. So Sagittarius, South Node, Gemini, uh, North Node. And this information, okay, this truth serum, so to speak, is going to start to change our perception of reality. Okay. North node in Gemini. Yes, it's the sign of communication, but underlying communication is thought. Underlying thought is perception. In the light of that, it is fundamentally at its core the sign of perception. Now, the north node of the moon, you can think of it as our karmic medicine. Okay, 
what do we as humanity want to really bring into us? Uh, experiences that we want to have, energy we're trying to, to fold into our consciousness so that we can rapidly evolve. Okay, uh, That's the North Node. So therefore, we want to strive for the high-end expression of Gemini and you know not get away from Sagittarius just try to get just try to uh, find a balance point between them okay and uh, the by striving for the high end Gemini we can heal or kind of rectify the south node Sagittarius energy that might have gone sour a little bit now so the goal really over the next 18 months that we've just stepped into is to perceive reality more clearly. Okay, so that's going to be the ongoing theme. But I believe this month is going to be as it's just entered these signs, and all this stuff I've been describing is really going to blast us off. Okay, breath of fresh air, not only literally but also through information, altering our perception and maybe even changing our beliefs. You know. Uh, Sagittarius, the sign of beliefs, the philosopher archetype, uh, Jupiter strong in the mix, heavily activated by it being next to Pluto. Jupiter is the planet of beliefs and faith. So perception changing our beliefs, what we believe reality to even be. This is a paradigm buster. And the truth serum may be a piece of that, a big piece of that. Okay. Now, we look at, let's say, some of the dark side potentials of Sagittarius. Sagittarius, as I said, is the philosopher. Okay, On the high end, it's the intuitive function to reach out and try to understand uh, intuitively and mentally, what is this all about? What does it all mean? Why are we here? Are we alone? You know, you know uh, Sagittarius likes to ask those big questions and then create a belief around it. But if we tweak that a little bit and look at the dark potential of the philosopher archetype, we tweak that and call it preacher, the sign of the preacher. Okay. So dogma, fixed set of ideologies and belief systems that we've taken on to be gospel, so to speak. Now, I said gospel. It's a reference to religion, obviously. But it's important to recognize that we can be close-minded about what we believe to be true around many different things, you know, about being an atheist or being a scientist, you know, uh, or being a Catholic or a Muslim, whatever, you know. It's, it's a rigidity around what we believe to be true. We create blinders. We enter into echo chambers and only hear things, you know, for example, on the Internet that just bolster our own belief, okay? So Gemini North Node over the next year and a half is a paradigm buster saying, ah, it's time for you guys and girls. <laughs> Got to be PC here. You know, it is 2020 after all in this Aquarian age, you know, to perceive reality more clearly. A really healthy Gemini, a living mantra for Gemini energy is like, whatever I believe reality to be, it's not quite that, you know, and I'm open to that. And some people, and this is really the tension between these two symbols of Gemini and Sagittarius, some people who are clinging to their belief systems, okay, which is really information that's not even their own. They've been kind of indoctrinated by that faith. For some of them, not all of them, obviously, depends on their own dynamics and birth charts, but some of them, it will not be easy to have their paradigm shattered, of course. Okay, some, for some people, it'll be great. It'll be like, oh my God, thank you. But really, that's the big, big picture, and we've just now entered the start of it in a big way. We're not just kind of, uh, you, know, lo you know, landing softly. You know, we're, we're, doing the, we're doing the dive bomb right into this uh, nodal structure changing signs. So the truth serum. Now, the truth doesn't even always go down easy. You know, the truth hurts, you know, sometimes. But it's, you know, in the, the divine plan, it's for our betterment. It's for our evolution. It's where we're at now and taking it in, in stride and working with it. 
so we can rapidly evolve. And really, that's the evolutionary intention here, with the goal always being to expand our consciousness. At this point, we're going to shift gears, as usual with my videos. We've done the astrological analysis piece. Now we're going to go right into meditation, where we're going to uh, go into deep contemplation about the energies we're currently experiencing and try to work with them on that more Neptunian spiritual level. And um, I will be using, again, binaural beats. So uh, for best results, you know, you'll want to use headphones. Enjoy. Make sure you have a nice straight spine. And breathe deeply and comfortably. Nice, slow, deep belly breathing. And bring your conscious awareness into your chest area. And feel your heart beat in your chest. It's the pulse of life. See if you can match your breath with your heartbeat. Four beats of the heart per inhale. Four beats of the heart per exhale. If you have trouble feeling your heartbeat, just use a four count. Inhale. Exhale. In. Out. Now begin to visualize energy in and around your body. Pulsing like an ocean tide. Feel those waves of energy ripple out to the four corners of the room as you inhale and recede back into you as you exhale. As you inhale, push out and expand. And exhale, return. Nice, slow breaths. Now, focus your attention on your feet and visualize a brilliant white color in both of your feet. Luminous white color. Softening all the tissues in your feet. Now, see the color go up into your ankles. Moving slowly. Now up into the calf muscles and lower legs. Now into the knees. And into the thighs. Bright snow white color. Shining in all directions. In both of your legs now. Now move up to the hips and buttocks. And see the snow white color start to go up your lower back, middle back, especially up through the spine area, softening all the muscles in your back, relieving tension, up through the middle back, into the upper back, around the scapula and in between. 
feel them let go, soften. See this white color move up into the shoulder area. And releasing tension in your lower neck where it connects to your upper body there. Feel the snow white color start to go down both arms at the same time in the upper arms, flowing down into the elbows, into the forearms now. and now into the hands. Visualize your hands glowing with a bright white light. Each time you inhale, you see your hands go brighter and brighter. You might feel a tingling or a warmth in your hands if you really concentrate strongly with the visualization. sending energy to your hands and they feel vibrant now bring the white color up again through the wrists and forearms and elbows upper arm, and shoulders, and now it begins to flow down the front of your body, down over and through the chest, the heart area, the lungs, into the stomach, spleen, and liver, and intestines, and in your pelvic floor, now the energy is moving back up again, through the stomach, solar plexus, chest, now it's at the neck area and the thyroid. And bring the snow white energy to the back of the neck and let it just sit there and glow brightly. A lot of us hold tension in the neck. Feel it soften and let go. Each time you inhale, it goes brighter and brighter. Now over the back of the head and ears, top of the head, you might feel a tingling at the top of the head. like somebody's touching your hair or something. And now bring the white energy down over the forehead and into the eyes, cheeks, jaw, upper lip, lower lip into the mouth and tongue.
Now bring your attention to your entire head now. And the color is changing from a snow white color to a brilliant white gold. And see this gold color grow brighter and brighter each time you inhale. See it in the form of a sun, a golden sun in and around your head, shining brightly in all directions, shining light in all directions. You're a beacon, you're a lighthouse. an embodiment of truth. Feel all your thoughts relax and just flow through you and burn off from the heat of the sun. You are radiant. You are divine. Grows brighter as you inhale and ripples light in all directions as you exhale. See this golden color shine out in all directions. Nice, slow breathing. Maintain the visualization. If you get distracted, that's okay. Just gently bring your awareness back to the task at hand. Now see the white gold color start to turn into a deep canary yellow. still growing brighter and brighter. And ask that the Creator enlighten your mind so that you can see the truth. say in your mind, I consciously choose to perceive reality more clearly. I consciously choose to perceive reality more clearly. Crystal clear. I want you to see this golden color spread throughout your entire body downwards through your arms, chest, back, stomach, pelvis, upper legs, lower legs. And see your entire body as a radiant golden being of light, shining in all directions. All the cells of your body invigorated by this light. Now slowly bring your hands up to your face, keep your eyes closed and cover your face and eyes with your palms together and slowly begin to open your hands outward as if you're opening a door 
and slowly as you open your hands, begin to open your eyes. And as you open your eyes, feel like you're seeing a new reality for the first time through new eyes, through a new perception a new way to perceive reality clearly. Welcome to your new reality.